All right, we're learning a little bit more about this guy, the Russian assailant that was showing uh, his police ID to avoid going through a metal detector. Can you believe that? Uh, they were making a big stink. Hey, why aren't you going through the metal detector? You have to go through the metal detector for this uh, art event that was going to feature the Russian ambassador. He said no, showed his ID, and didn't do that. And of course, you know the rest of the story. In Berlin, meanwhile, a man on underway as officials try to seek a Tunisian man in connection with the truck attack there. Uh, supposedly part of the initial wave of refugees, in fact, was trying to seek asylum there uh, and indications that uh, they would not allow it. All right, so the former Secretary of Defense, Paul Wolfowitz, on, on all of this happening at the same time. <laughs> Ambassador, good to have you. Boy, this is really Merry confusing. Christmas to you, Neil. Yeah, right, I, and very confusing now um, because this is happening in a season where a lot of people are getting increasingly restless, particularly in Europe. What do you, what do you think? Look, I think we see in this, and we see, I think, here in the U.S. as well, there are a lot of gaps in our surveillance and in our pursuit of people where we already know that they have a lot of bad labels on them. There was a 12-year-old boy in Germany, I think a few weeks back, who was caught for the second time trying to, the second time trying to plant explosives. Right. Apparently both times he failed. And because he's under 14, they're not prosecuting him. There's no word either that they're surveilling his parents. I mean... Look, I understand why the Germans don't want to go back to Nazi methods, but they need to be much tougher on these modern-day Nazis. You know, uh, Ambassador, I, uh, I read a lot when you would talk to the press, because you rarely do so, which is to your credit, I guess. Uh, but you were speaking to a, a German newspaper, Der Spiegel, back in the summer, and you were worried at the time about Donald Trump, saying the only way you can be comfortable about Trump's foreign policy is to think that he doesn't really mean anything he says. You said that our security depends on having good relationships with our allies. You talked about how close and how glowing he was in his praise for Vladimir Putin. And it worried you so much so that you said, I might have to vote for Hillary Clinton. Did you? Well, I didn't, for what it's worth. Okay, all right. Uh, but you were raising concerns. Obviously, many others uh, were, were raising those same concerns. Donald Trump won regardless. The signs you've seen since he's been elected president, uh, what, what do you think? Well, I like the appointments. I particularly like General Mattis. Uh, he, I worked with him when I was in the Pentagon. He's an outstanding leader. He's a very tough-minded guy. He's very knowledgeable. He will be giving President, when it is President Trump, very good advice. I'm confident of that. And I've heard very good things about General Flynn uh, from people who worked with him, who say that his concept of national security advisor is exactly what I think it should be, which is that it's not his job to be the grand strategist. It's his job to get the cabinet departments to present clear good options to the president and then the president should be deciding so that's all a good sign I am still worried about Putin and about a tendency to take him as a man who's going to help us kill terrorists when in fact he's a man who goes he and his friend Assad and the Iranians go around creating terrorists and that's very very dangerous well that's what's so raised some that concerns still you... makes me uneasy I'm sorry ambassador what would because that affinity or closeness, whatever you want to describe it for Putin. Some Democrats say that Putin even helped grease the skids for Donald Trump to become president. I think that's a little extreme. Having said that, though, uh, the selection of Rex Tillerson of ExxonMobil to be the Secretary of State, also a gentleman with very close ties to the Kremlin and, and to Mr. Putin in particular, does, does that worry you? Do, you? do you think that a Trump administration would be loath to take on the Russians or even criticize them? Well, obviously, in his confirmation hearings, uh, the secretary designate Tilson, Tillerson is going to have to give a very clear account of how he views Russia, not from an Exxon point of view, but from a U.S. national interest point of view. And I will be very interested to see that. I understand he's a very thoughtful, intelligent man, so I expect he will say thoughtful and intelligent things, and we will have to judge then. Uh, I'm actually very favorably impressed by what the president-elect has said about the need to create safe zones in Syria so that the refugees stay in Syria instead of starting to flood Europe where they're frankly very destabilizing. You know, Ambassador, over the many years I've talked to Donald Trump, one of the things that came through that whatever he thought about Russia, and he didn't really bring up Russia very often, he really was much more concerned, angrier at China. And given what China's been doing in the South China Sea and um, militarizing all these islands that aren't even theirs, uh, the fact that Donald Trump has said they rigged their currency so they rigged trade with us and that we're always on defense and they're 
far more a threat, he seems to be saying, than, than any other country on the planet to the United States. Do you agree with that? Look, I think we face three, three countries that want to recreate old empires, the, the Persians, i.e. the Iranians, the Russians, and the Chinese. And I think in the long run, China is likely to be the more successful country and therefore in some ways more dangerous. But uh, you have to figure out, you have to choose your enemies. You can't take them all on at once. I do believe that it's a mistake to run away from the Middle East as much as it's tempting to do so because it's such a wasteland. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, a, that's no, too strong a word. But, but people should remember that virtually all of the oil that flows through the South China Sea, where we are at odds with the Chinese, originates from the Persian Gulf. You can't give up one and focus on the other. You've got to, you've got to, this idea of pivoting, which the Obama administration pursued, is, in my view, a nonsense. The two regions are so interconnected, you've got to pay attention to the Middle East, as difficult as it is. And it is very difficult. Ambassador, how do you think Donald Trump will do? Well, I'm, I can tell you, I'm hoping he will do well. I thought his initial move on ta this small move, and it was a small move, but it signaled a lot with Taiwan, which is the, as far as I know, the only democratically run Chinese entity in history. It's a magnificent example for the rest of Asia and particularly for mainland China. And I think we've gone overboard in overinterpreting what this so-called one China policy means. It's complicated. I, I was the assistant secretary of state for that region for four years and I know how complicated it is. But there's a lot of room within a proper framework to expand our unofficial relations with Taiwan. And I think taking a congratulatory call from the, their president is not a bad way to start and to show that you're going to do that. Do you think it was calculated, though, that they knew the risks and controversy of taking that call? Well, I hope they did. I mean, it clearly mm -hmm. was calculated. I hope they recognize that there will be blowback, and I hope they then don't retreat in the face of the blowback. To be honest, President Reagan made that mistake, I believe, and. President George W. Bush made the same mistake. So starting out with a strong position, if you're not prepared, right. and frankly, I'm glad it wasn't such a strong position. It was a very mild one. And the kinds of things that should happen now are not sort of big, bold steps toward Taiwan. Okay. But things like sending the Commerce Secretary to visit, that's something that was actually done in the Clinton years, I believe. It's the kind of thing that can clearly be interpreted within a so-called unofficial relationship. And I hope they will persist in that kind of low-key but clear messaging. Ambassador, a real pleasure having you on again. Thank you as well for your service to this country under very difficult conditions and times. We appreciate it, sir. These are a few scars, but it's, That's right, right? I have to tell you, uh, working with people like Jim Mattis, which I got the privilege to do, was just the high point of my life in many ways, my career at least. I'm sure. Then the next time you have to tell me how I got the Mad Dog title, but that's to be continued. Always good having you, sir. Be well.